No, hold on. Is Josh screening? The... No. Um, oh, okay. I was like, wait, hold on. The volunteer is putting up. Okay. Oh, close captioning. All right. Close captioning. Oh, the awesome. close captioner. Super cool. Because I am on deaf in this ear. So also, if I ask anyone to repeat themselves, I apologize. It's over their headphones and hard of hearing. Um, <laughs> I guess we're going to start the panel off by introducing ourselves. Um, hi, my name is Ari Rose. I am the moderator for the panel. Um, I'm really excited to have everybody here. I was so happy. Uh, I want to give a shout out to T for helping find everyone because I was, uh, I, I was a little, I was a little lost. I really deeply appreciate it. And everyone being here, um, if you could all take a minute to introduce yourselves, uh, what you do, your pronouns and your top three video games. I would love that. Rachel, you want to go first since you're right next to me? I think since I'm right next to you, I should go last. Okay. Fair enough. Then, um, Brian, would you like to go first? Or they said to go uh -oh. first. Yes, yes, we did. Go for it. Sorry, I think. Oh, that's... oh yeah. Sorry, lost you. Um, hi. I... <laughs> Starting off to uh, to a rousing start. I'm Brian Gray. I'm Irma Bohemian Everywhere, um, a variety content creator on Twitch, and basically kind of loud on the internet. Um, my favorite three games. That's ugh. um Destiny and Destiny Two. Um, I really love Borderlands 2. I could just basically play Borderlands 2 forever. And the other one's tough. I don't know if I have a third because I, I have so many other I have so many other things that I like. Hades, right obviously. Hades. Um, yeah, now I'm playing Hades and Elite Dangerous, so I'm in space or I'm in hell. All right. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a good plan. Todd, you're, you're up if you'd like. Sure. Hi, I'm Tanya. Notice I've heard her on the internet. Pronouns are she, her. Favorite three games are Dragon Age 2, Mass Effect 3, and The Witcher 3. Nice. Awesome. That was so easy for you. This I know. Is not fair. I've been thinking about it for the last time. Like, okay, what am I going to just roll off with? Um, <laughs> I know, right? I'm going to have to start asking like your four, five, and six from now on because you always. Yeah, Mass Effect 2. Look at her go. Look at her go. Oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good choice. Good choice. Hi, everybody. I'm Okenyo Vargas. Uh, you might know me as DM Jazzy Hands from around the interwebs. Uh, you can follow me uh, on the, all the places as DM Jazzy Hands. I'm a uh, streamer, podcaster, and uh, tabletop role playing game designer. Um, and my, oh no. What did I tell you in my email? I think in my email when you asked me this question, thank you, by the way, for yeah, the heads up. <laughs> was that it's a moving target, but currently my favorite three are um, Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, what did I say? I think I said Hades, and my current like MMO, I cannot tear myself away is Final Fantasy XIV. Awesome, Rachel, you wanna go? Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm gonna take this out so I don't hear myself. <laughs> uh, she, her. I am a um, writer. I'm on the board for Geeks Out. Um, when we have a cosplay corner, that's where you'll usually find me. So you can find me there next year. Um, I am also a podcaster, seamstress, really doing whatever I want right now. It's been a fun, tumultuous year. Um, you can find me at Zari Tarazi. And I think my top three, and I've literally been sitting next to you for two I told days. you, I literally, literally woke you up. Like, <laughs> okay, have your games ready. No, I'm going to ask you. you. Are going to, okay. I would say top three, probably, I really love the Red Dead Redemption franchise, the first and second Ooh. one. I'd say um, I like two better than one just because it's longer. Um, then the Bayonetta, Bayonetta 1 and 2. And I started playing The Sims 4 just so I could sort of talk to that on this panel. And now I've put like 16 hours in. Yeah, <laughs> that's just this round. <laughs> um, I also realized I didn't give myself a form in introduction, so I guess I'll go last. I know I already said, hi, I'm Ari Rose. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and he, his. Um, I completely blanked on my top three games or I'm not going to go. I'm the one who came up with the question. I had it prepared. Uh, Pokemon as a series, it's, I've literally played since I was like three years old. I, it's, it's my, it's like my thing. I don't know if you can, I set those all up. I got, it's my, it's my series. Um, Dragon Age as a whole and Fire Emblem as a whole, but specific games more than others. Cause that's a series with a lot of highs and lows. 
Um, I think until we can get the screen sharing started, um, I would actually let me see if I can do it first and let me know if it's because I can try the Chrome tab again and see if that works so we can get this started properly. <gasps> no, there's um, right. we can see it. Hooray. Oh, it's literally right there. Okay. It's been a while. All right. This is, hey. this is everybody's panelists. Oh, no. Uh, discussion questions. I put these here largely. This is also for the audience. Um, I'm going to just stay over here so I can see it. Um, this is also for the audience to consider as well as the panelists. These are questions I kind of wanted everyone to walk away thinking about more so. We don't all have to talk about them, but these were what I was thinking of when I pitched the panel. So, you know, I hope everybody can, everybody can devote some time and thought to it as well. We're going to start with... Tanya's first up on the PowerPoint, so Tanya, you're up. Oh, Joy, hi. Um, so I just wanted to talk about this briefly because a lot of people, when we talk about inclusion, we talk about diverse people go, but you can customize your character. And I'm like, cool, I don't get my hair. I'm usually can't unable to be darker than a brown paper bag. So that isn't really inclusion. And, uh, you know, Brian and I have talked about this a lot. Other people have talked about it. When you do get to be black in a game, you either have the bald, the short fade, the afro, or the braids with a part so big you can drive a Mack truck through them. And no locks, no decent looking fro. Games are getting better, but it's still not great. Um, and then, you know, why we're all here, games are not gay enough. You're usually, it's usually, I mean, they're not. Yeah. I, I want my gay ass games. So it's either subtext that you really got to dig for or when it's explicit, that character often has a backstory or part of the story where they're unhappy being queer or someone wants to change them, et cetera. And actually, the next screenshot shows that because, gee, Dragon Age, who would have thought me with a Dragon oh, Age screenshot? Oh, Dodo. I love the new Dodo. Dodo. Oh, Dodo. that's the new nickname. That's right. Yeah, okay, so you said it. You have to explain Dodo. Oh, well, so obviously I romance story and when I played this game uh, mm -hmm. and everyone gets nicknames and uh, the more I like the character, the more ridiculous the nickname. And so Dorian became my Dodo. I like Dodo. I always call him <laughs> Dory. That's really sweet. Oh, Dory's cute too. I like that too. I know. I'm like, I'm hey, everybody here romancing Dorian. How are we doing? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just recall I was watching you play Dragon Age Origins. And the whole thing about Dorian's storyline that I recall is that you don't actually get an option that is like, you know what, your dad is garbage. Let's get him. You kind of have to, yeah. like, you can be like, well, he just wants the best for you. I'm not sure if anyone's ever seen someone made a post that has the Dragon Age dialogue options. And it's just like, do you want me to punch your dad? Do you want me to hire someone to punch your dad? I would Can love I that. One dollar a day to have someone do that every day for just one dollar a day. One dollar a day. Oh no! <laughs> I, I want to let Tanya speak the most on this, but I will say this quick thing because I, th I think we all have some Dragon Age experience. The fact that you can't, because I ran the romance in my second playthrough, and I thought you could marry everybody, and mm. so I was like, I can't wait to marry Dorian and trespass for my friend. I was like, Oh no! Yeah. And I was like, Sorry, and they were like, No, you don't. No, it doesn't. End. And I was like. Oh, okay. I uh, I'm out then. Like that's a, like that that hit me hard. Like on my I was like, this yeah. sucks. Like it just sucks that you don't get because like I, I romance Colin. I wanted the dog. Uh, yes, so did the this dog. Fairy tale wedding, and it's like so cute and beautiful. And then you don't get that with Dorian. That's like, why? But yeah, I'm gonna let the power of mods. Point. No, mods. <laughs> I'm excited to replay with mods. But uh. Do you want me to go to the next slide, or are you still want uh, to... I actually want to see if Brian or Eugenio had something to say. Okay. Well, I, I mean, you know, right now we're talking about, uh, I think, particularly um, gender and uh, sexuality and romantic sort of whatever in, in character creators. 
And there's, you know, they get better and the better they get, I feel like the more we in society and in sort of the gamer community uh, uh, have more to ask for, which is, which is great. Um, but it does mean that the work is never done, right? So now we have, there are games, there exist games, not all of them, but there exist games with better hairstyles, right? Better black hairstyles. There exist games that have non Crayola box skin tones beyond, right? Like, uh, beyond tan. Um, and that's all great, right? And there are games that allow you to choose uh, to choose your gender, and some of them even don't necessarily just have two choices. Although most of those that don't have two choices just have three choices, which, uh, okay, we're getting there, right? But there's so much more, and I, I, I think... For me, what's really interesting, and I think we'll get into this later, what's really interesting about this, and we've started talking about it with the Dorian storyline, is great. So we're seeing better representation, better, not great, better representation in character creators. Um, as we continue to improve that side of games, I also want to see how then those choices, and this is a dangerous thing to ask for, right? And I understand that we can talk about that too. But I want to see how those things really actually affect your gameplay and affect your narrative. And I say it's dangerous because it is very easy then for narrative designers and devs to sort of, um, you know, take, well, if you choose that you're going to be a trans person, then there's some, you know, trans tragedy storyline that gets looped into the story. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean yeah. at all, right? Um, but I, I want to see it be, uh, as we get better choices and are able to see ourselves better, I want that to have meaning too, which I think is sort of a, a, a dangerous but exciting can of worms as we as we talk a little bit more about this and as we as we do make progress because you know there are certainly more choices now than five, 10, 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> Oh no, I, I agree. I was actually I hate I we're not we're not gonna talk about Dragon Souls, I promise. But yeah. I was thinking, I was have you of, seen my slides? Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. Know, yeah. But, <laughs> there was one other thing that I was actually thinking of in terms of dialogue and how this relates to the narrative, which is I'm mm -hmm. just gonna piggyback back off of that because that's a great sure. point. And there's a conversation you can have with Krim, who is a trans man in the game, and he is great and you know, all issues aside with the voice casting and everything, let, love him as a character, and you can talk to him, and every single question you can ask, I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, this uh -huh. is the worst thing I had ever, I don't, I'm uncomfortable, and there's no option to say, hi, I'm also trans, how are you? It doesn't even exist, and I'm not saying that everyone has to pick it, like, Bioware's and breaking into my house, holding a gun to my hand, going, you better pick that option for your, or we're gonna throw you in free speech jail, but, like, it, it's, it's not even an option. And it's like my internal vision of the character is not like, if I have this internal vision, the game literally won't let me express it. I, right. it's, it's difficult. It's frustrating. It needs to have more narrative impact. Yeah, I, I make like, yeah, some of the points that I added are, are very long winded, but very saying the exact same thing. Like when I make, when I'm able to create this character or represent myself as a character, the game world still is the game world. It is still a very like, cisgender heteronormative game world and i i think about mass effect andromeda which is one that i really enjoyed and would love a sequel to but i chose to play um, i chose to play a male protagonist and chose um you know same-sex pairings and there are basically two options in the entire universe and galaxy for your romance and you don't see you don't see that anywhere else. Like you, you don't see anyone else have relationships at all. So there is no, there's no like saying, oh, this is actually quite standard and normal in the universe around you. It's really just your protagonist chooses this. You choose to make this protagonist and this option exists pretty much only for you. And like they've said, it doesn't really impact the storyline or the world or the universe around you, which sucks. Yeah, um, agreed. If we're just talking about yeah. the universe, just to piggyback on that, because just to go sort of out of the first person idea, The Sims 4 really wanted to make sort of a statement on like, you can pick, like they have this whole list of questions where you're designing your character, which is that can this character get pregnant? Can they impregnate other people or neither? But there's still the basic, you know, male, female, even though you can go and, you know, customize your gender options, 
if I pick male, it's going to automatically say, okay, this character prevents senses male, they can get people, here's their default voice tone. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that The Sims is one of the few games when you're doing a slider that actually lets, if you're using their women body model, be fat. Most of the time, a physical oh, yeah, slider so is just a, for boobs. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fallout 4 being one of the most notable examples of that that I can think yeah, of. Yeah, I literally, I wanted to see how how far it would go out, and it's like nothing. But if you look at all the promotional material for The Sims, you know, they have different versions of portraits that you can put in your house. They have the straight couple, they have the what is supposed to be the woman woman couple presenting and the what is supposed to be presenting the male male couple where you can tell they're like okay that's that's it that's the three couples that's it why would it we not did just it. be rendered versions of your avatars I I, it's I, too difficult and they don't use any actual i don't see a lot of fat sims in their promotional material even though that's something that the slider can use and i just think you know fatness is a no another promotional angle. material is another big point yeah. where it's like what do we consider i think everybody kind of has a default for even for customizable characters like i think about like uh, to talk about dragon age 2 like the hawks are kind of like they look a certain <laughs> way in all the promotional material this is the yeah. canon hawk and it only looks like this where it's like i understand why you have a marketable character for game marketing reasons but it also is very telling in a game that's more broad like the sims where it's like but there's no one there's no mr sim that you're marketing you can just have a wide variety of sims in your marketing so who they choose and choose not to include in promotional material is very telling yeah and i think that's i think that is a good example and the things that that you all have mentioned are good examples of how we would like these choices that we made these these factors of our representation to affect the game right i've been thinking about it since i said it because because what i don't mean is that i want the I don't I don't want or need it to be an obstacle in the game that I have chosen a trans character. I don't need it to be, uh, a, you know, a constant like background banter comment point that I have chosen a fat bodied protagonist. Right. But what I want is for all of that to be acknowledged in a way that shows that it is normalized in this world, which includes marketing materials. Right. That's a really good place that you can have a fat trans, I don't know, what else do we want to say? Disabled, all of the things, right? And just just have them. That's all we want, right? Because then you're showing that this world includes us and includes all of us. But it isn't, it isn't that it isn't the Dorian thing, right? It isn't that our gay romance option has a has a I don't what are what is our rating in here? What am I allowed to say? I've already said plenty, I know, but <laughs> I've been trying are so we hard cursing? I Great. Been All right. So a, a crappy conversion therapy parent storyline, right? I'll say crappy. Um, right? Like that's not that's not it anymore, right? We just want it to be established that all of these different things are a natural part of the world and that's tough look that's hard to do yeah. without doing all the things that i said we don't want right or that are harmful or that are whatever i get it that's tough that's why you want your consultants for your games but that's another conversation um it's it's about normalizing it in the game universe not necessarily although sometimes this can be fine but not necessarily highlighting it every single second just making us feel like we can make ourselves and then that ourselves have this you know, very natural place in the world of the game. Yeah, and we can actually go through the slides or just visual presentations of all the things we've just talked about. I know, I'm really <laughs> reading it actually. Hold on. So yeah, no, I mean, yeah. what we talked yeah. about. And After I just hair, wanted to put yeah. in. Oh yeah. I just want to put in. Feminism. I mean, it's an interesting conversation when you talk about mods because that's what most people have had to do in The Sims, yeah. even to to like craft their yeah. worlds to acknowledge more things and the sim modding community is huge about that. It is huge, but I think that's actually an excellent point because when you look at the content that's being made or the custom sims you can download, first of all, um, it's very odd that the sims commits itself to having so many varied options, but we're on the fourth generation and there's no disability representation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no option for wheelchairs or crutches or even hearing aids 
which not to say yeah. these are a sliding scale. No, but listing but things, half but, hearing aid in your ears a little bit. Like, um, I mean, I only need one. So it's like, yeah, yeah it, some people only need the one. You but know, I mean, they all look, the modern community, while it's huge, what's popular very much looks a certain way. It's all this very smooth, mm. like model esque, mm. you know, skin with abs. Skin with better <laughs> boob shading. Oh, it's true. <laughs> and I download all of it because their base yeah, skin yeah. is kind of eh. But it's also that is where you see options. A lot of people complained in The Sims 4 that the options for black skin are not actually shaded super great. So that's a mod you have to get if you yeah. want actually, you know, a hairline that isn't just the huge gap between braids that's a mod and you can't always download yeah. mods because sometimes you do and then they crash your partner's computer you didn't uh -oh. That oh no happened. that's definitely not a specific wow, really example specific. or anything <laughs> thank god I mean, no, that, is, that also kind of penalizes PC, uh, non-PC players for game. I hate to keep going, but I'm sorry. I have to go back to Inquisition again because this is a no. game. It has one of the most, I, like, even now when I'm looking at, like, what are the best character creators in games while I was doing my research, with, it still pops up. This game is almost 10 years old. It's yeah. pretty involved. But if you're playing it, like, I played it on a PS4 for the first time. If I want mods for it, I'm out of luck. They don't do it. So it's like, I have to go, like, I had to go build a PC to go play this game with mods that actually work. And that, that sort of locks out a lot of players. Like a, a gaming PC is expensive. Um, a console was way cheaper by comparison. It locks out people right. who want those diverse options, but maybe don't necessarily have the money to afford to play on a good PC. Totally a thing. No, no. not the same PC that I mentioned. No, different PC. <laughs> also specify. Um, we are at Brian. If you want to oh. uh, pop it, because I'm on your power uh, PowerPoint slide. Sure. Um, I mean, I touched on. I, I'm, I have a feeling that the people on this panel were all going to touch on a lot of the same things. Yeah. Um, for me, just like the first thing I thought of is just the immersion that you have in a game world, being able to create a character that represents yourself, or whatever you know, whatever your headcanon is. Like some people use some people use game character creation to es essentially you know, try things in a fictional world that they can't do in the real world. But it just, it, it really just adds something to the experience to be able to make a protagonist in anything that's not the same grizzled old white guy with a tortured past and probably cisgender woman partner who's gone through something tragic, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of games do that. Um, that's right, Redemption 2, baby. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's, fine, but yeah. it's, it's like, there's, it's like there's, a, there's a lot of them. Um, and as we said, like the skin tones, you know, you, you, you add the skin tone in there, but then you don't also accommodate for lighting and shading. So you may be able to pick like a darker skin tone, but then you practically disappear against the, um, against the background. I'm sorry, everyone's vanishing. Is my internet spring up? Can y'all hear me? Uh, I, I can see yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, there's also, we have like a storm tornado warning here or something. Yeah. So, you know, so oh, it's just, it's fine. I'm it's sure it's fun fine. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> really good on the weather. And, you know, as I said, like if you offer character, if you offer character either creation options or you offer, um, you know, romantic paths in game, uh, gender identity paths, any of those things, it still feels like it's just catered to you. You know, you get to have this. The rest of the world is still very, you know, cisnormative, heteronormative. And you, you know, you are like you'll be the the only queer person in the universe, the only trans person in the universe. Or like in the case of Dragon Age, if if you're not, there's still no way to bond with the one other person in the universe. And um, you know it's the same. It's the same for any orientation. Like you, you can have orientation options, but other people just it's it's like okay, but everyone else around you is pretty much straight, and your, you know, you get your one, two, three options, etc. Um, and yeah, a lot of this is I'm thinking about a lot of narrative story during games, but then I think about the games that get it, that get it right um because i play a lot of visual novels as well and that's where those that's where those stories and those options really shine um mm. that's 
it, I don't know, it, it's where you can, you know, you can choose a range of pronouns or some of them now add your own, you know, the default, the default that they do is not, okay, well, we're just going to give you a, you know, we're going to give you a slim white cisgender male character. And then you, you, you know, change it up. Like they just randomize everything. Um, it's, it's nicer to see that happening. As Eugenio said, it's getting better. It, it is mm. absolutely getting better. Um, it, it's just what we're seeing is we're seeing the smaller dev studios and the independent studios and the ones that are using queer writers, queer developers, queer animators, they're the ones who are making these stories. It just, it would really be lovely to see that start expanding to, you know, like the triple A studios and those games as well. Um, I think the biggest one I can think of that does that is, um, you know, Borderlands, their, their third game has an entire DLC where a character who admittedly has been queer since the first game gets married and it's it's this whole it's this whole thing and it's not treated like it's anything special or different um so it, it's it's absolutely getting better but there's always room for there's always room for growth and there's always room for for basically normalizing it not making it a special spotlight moment and not standing out that hey we did this it's like that's great everyone should be doing this that's a big one. I'm glad you also brought up visual novels because I really like visual novels. And I'm almost like, I, there's something to be said here, I think, too, about how customization works in the context of like romance specific games, where these games might have more involved character creators because you're supposed to be imagining either your ideal self or your ideal character, or whatever, in a romantic situation. So you've got to get everything just right. So that emphasis is there so that the relationship can feel more real, mm -hmm. which is kind of neat in its own regard. Um, I really love that. I'm gonna hold on. Do you have any? Oh, wait, hold on. This is mine. I'm so sorry. How do I go back? Oh, hey, that was really easy. Um, <laughs> I was like really worried I was gonna have to restart the whole thing all over again. Um, I want to actually, speaking of romance stuff, since we're kind of going on it, I'm gonna just skip to actually, uh, in terms of big triple A, I've never played this game. Let me just, I, I don't, I'm bad, I'm bad at shooters. Um, but I want to talk I about this game in terms of like triple A games doing trying to do something because it's such a weird this game in specific it's call of duty black ops cold war like the weirdest game to have three genders where they have the male female and classified gender and the creator is like and i quote if we don't have something somebody wants and let's let them leave it classified so they can be that mysterious shadowy black ops character they want to be and then everyone was like so that's awesome. not how that works so then so they put awesome. a fourth one in and then, so now you have non-binary, male, female, classified, and inexplicably, Ronald Reagan is like using your using your pronouns, which I'm just like, what? It, it's like, it almost you feels, know, it feels so weird to see them try here. Hold on, I actually got a visual of the screen because you're just like. What? Like, what yeah, it's, the, like, look, it's just like, I mean. Oh my for, gosh. Thanks for the first wow. option, I, I guess, but it's so. It feels like somebody in their design team saw that like the jokey, ah, yes, the three genders meme and then added classified in as like a joke yeah. option. And everyone went, oh, we'd actually like a real option, please. And they went, I mean, I guess, but we're oh. all of duty, so you're still going to be committing war crimes. And it's like <laughs> that discord is the biggest thing I want to bring up when it comes to like, hey, it's great that you're taking these steps to have Ronald Reagan respect my pronouns. But first off, it's Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and second off, um, you're still having it. Like, it's like, does this matter when you're still active military propaganda? Like, I, I mean, straight up, the games are just, that's, that's US imperialist propaganda. I don't think that's a controversial statement. So it feels, it's like, I don't want to say don't try, but it's also like, Maybe think about this in the broader scope of all the other things your games are doing first before you're like, you know how we fix this? Adding a fourth gender. Like that that was a weird thing to do with character customization. And it was in such a jarring context. It, it's weird because, well, I'm just trying to debate a little, like how much I can say because the game I'm working on, I've consulted on that is not out yet, cool. has options. And <sighs> when I saw some of the initial options, I was like, if you put out this game with these options, you're going to get run through the dirt. Unfortunately, they listened, so the game will not come out with these weird options or other images of like 
black characters that look very stereotypical and what people mm-hmm. expect when they watch Fox News of, of mm-hmm. black people. And so with all of this, because I, I, I should have found the thread, but there was someone who talked about working on the new Rainbow Six and they have a trans operative. And now some people are very upset because the character looks so masculine. But the, one of the consultants is like, but the character looks literally like me and I'm trans femme. So we get into the gamer bro. If you don't look, if you're not full face makeup, tits up to your chin and a waist you can put both hands around, people don't see you as feminine either. Mm. So they clearly did not work with anyone when they did this. And it as easy as it was to put in the non-binary option, they could have just taken classified out. That's my thing. I don't yeah. even know where to start. Why did they like? Why? Why, why, why would they put classified? Like, uh, I think it's got to happen. Well, I don't. Oh god. Well, they just said, "All right, we heard you about how there's only three genders. We've added a fourth, and it's like, sorry that I, this is just it. But I like, I, I, it, it was such a weird. And again, in a game that I'm not, I don't want to say that like maybe some games aren't the right place for this, but I'm also like, really, Call of Duty Black Ops. Like, it's just, like, I think if you're going to put it in, because I think it deserves to be in, there has to be, like, you literally need, like, 20 consultants and sensitivity readers on this thing, because mm-hmm. you are, just by virtue of the just fan base, you're, a number. I, I, yeah, arbitrary, <laughs> like, I, a lot, just a lot, okay, just a lot of them, as many as no. you can find, and because well, you need to understand that you are going to make this option and then throw it to a fan base that is not going to be be appreciative. Because it's like, when we've been talking about stuff before, all the other games we've kind of discussed have at least parts of their fan bases that would appreciate and welcome these these details and this level of inclusivity. I, I don't know so much about like game game bases like for like Call of Duty. So it's kind of like, you have to be very careful with how you present it because otherwise you're just going to let a bunch of people who don't deserve it and a bunch of characters who don't, well, any characters are real people, but the people behind them, like that trans person was like, this character looks like me. You're going to let them catch hell by proxy. And yeah. there's no need for that. You have to be, there. a level of care has to come in there, especially with the bigger studios. Um, I think I also brought up another big studio. This is another big one. Uh, yeah, somebody else. You want to pop in? No, I just, I, I thought saw someone who just say something oh no you're good i'm so sorry i'm i'm switching screen so if i don't see you raise like raise your hand or something i apologize um this was another big one where it's like i I could i I was like i I had to repeat these beforehand but um the (laughs) thing i wanted with this one is even after and i I, again have not played this game because um it doesn't work and it's broken so i was like "Mm," was really kind of i was interested to give it a try and then every single review was like it doesn't work on the ps4 like Okay, never mind then. But I went and I did my research, and it seems like they removed the option for your voice being like inexplicable. Like, it's tight. Like if you pick a female voice, uh-huh. you have you have what they consider female genitals. And I was like, well, that's stupid. I think they changed that. But the romance options, which I know Brian was talking about before, are still like hard body locked. Like if you want to romance the female romance option, you need the female body option and the female voice, and the male option requires the same. And it's like. It, like at that level of like okay so it's like such a swing and a miss that you're like why like it it, it 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 was it was you can customize your character but you also have to like it's basically telling you do you want to do it this way we well, have to customize it our way and it's like well then i can't interact with the game as the character i want to interact with right for a game that had such a very strong for a game that basically had a very strong body modification aesthetic to it it still exists on the binary when it came to the writing and it's like well then why 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 bother <laughs> yeah i i also <clears throat> i think it's important you know brian and i in particular have both pointed out like it's gotten better and i think we should clarify and i don't i don't want to speak for you but also i probably uh, which way do i look this time but also oh, probably I, yeah, I don't know where you are uh, this time. <laughs> <laughs> um when we say it's getting better, what I mean anyway, is that there are games that do it well, not we are seeing <laughs> attempts like Black Call of Duty Black Ops, right? <laughs> and I, I point that out because I think it's very easy for marginalized communities to, to not want to, 
to see an attempt and not want to like shit all over it because an attempt was made. And many times that feels like a huge thing for us. And I'm here to tell you like we deserve more. And so I don't count Call of Duty Black Ops as a win because they did it yeah. early. I think we should feel okay. And I think obviously the five of us do, uh, like putting studios feet to the fire and saying, hey, no, you tried and you didn't consult or you didn't whatever. And this is actually not, you know, we can we can thank them for their attempt, I guess. But like, I feel like it's worth saying that we are allowed to um, put feet to the fire and count progress as the ones that do it well, not the scraps that we occasionally get thrown by bigger studios who don't want to put, who, you know, I, and I, I don't want to, you know, philosophize for these devs. There's a million reasons why they may or may not decide to hire consultants and hire devs that are from different marginalized identities. But, but you know, it gets better means there are now five games that do it well instead of one, not there are now 30 games that attempt and 25 of them do it badly. Yeah. And also we need to get better that. about not accepting the crumbs of, of diversity because, and, and it's weird because Hard. like for every person, there's so many people that don't care and there are also people of color, queer folks that just don't care because they're not thinking of it that way. It's literally a game, it's entertainment, they put it down. But for those of us that think critically about it or we're sick of picking up games, spending 60, $70 and never seeing ourselves, I'd rather you almost not have a black character than to do it as poorly as some games I've seen. Yeah, the, the what did you expect, like, what did you want us to do kind of response that always comes in like, well, we made it, you know, we, we put a char queer character in it, we put a trans character in it, we put a black character in it, what more do you want from us? I feel like we have the right to basically say, well, you, if you're going to do it, do it properly, do it well. Otherwise, yeah, you're, you're going to get the criticism, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get these valid questions lobbed at you as to, you know, what was your process? Did you have a did you have a sensitivity reader? Did you actually have any review for this? Because it does seem like what they want to do is shoehorn in a character to make us shut up. And as as Eugenio says, that's not good enough. That's not it. That's not it. And that perpetuates more harmful stuff, right? I've also been thinking about the last time that I was in a character creator and made an attempt to make it look like me. And it's been a very long time because for a long time I couldn't, it was never, I could maybe get close-ish, but like couldn't do it. And I don't, I, I, now look, I don't know. And maybe the five of us are also the wrong people to ask, but like, I don't know how often people try and make their character creation protagonists look specifically like them, but I know I haven't done it in a very long time because the results are, are not good enough or I know the gameplay is going to do weird things to then a character that kind of looks like me which is strange so you know when you do it and you do it poorly or you do it and you do it half-assed not only is it not enough and we deserve more and we should you know feel feel empowered to ask for more but also it just perpetuates all kinds of harmful shit uh, you know for that identity for that community but also for the person playing who now feels like oh if I look like this this is the way that I move through the world because that's the, what the way the game has it programmed and that's that's a whole other sort of, you know, can of worms um, when these things are done poorly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks to feel like an afterthought. Oh, I'm sorry, Tanya, you first. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. I've talked about No, 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 no. You. John the moderator, you first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just thinking about uh, our friend DJ Knight, who, when he's playing Outer Worlds, and I use this clip of talks, where just the utter joy on his face where he can finally make a character that literally looks like him. You know, it's the locks are well done. The character's actually dark skin, like he is. He was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, in 30 years of gaming, this is the first time I've actually made a character that looks like me. I still haven't got there, so. That's really nice. I'm actually really glad. I, I actually bought the Outer Worlds last time it was on sale. So I'm really happy to hear it has that great character customization. Mm -hmm. On first level, I'm like, all right, nice. <laughs> I actually wanna hop on a point that we've sort of been making, but it's not the Circle exact one. point which is when there are characters, you know, they put the fourth gender option in Call of Duty or whatever they were doing in Cyberpunk. Um, I'm very hip with the games. <laughs> there is, as much as we're trying to be like, hey, this isn't great, or we would prefer you not even attempt this because it went very badly. It's very hard 
to, I think, sometimes get criticism actually out there because the internet is the to put it gently. And I was wondering what your thoughts on how to get that criticism out there, you know, how, how do you approach that? Um, and how do you also, you know, if you can, because sometimes it's unavoidable, what about the sort of danger that comes online when you criticize something for being anti-black or for being homophobic or both mm, transphobic yeah. or all mm. three and then you immediately get dog piled uh, mm. for me one of the things that that and this isn't this may be a little bit sidestepping but i but i do think it's important for your question is is that we have to support and lean on outlets to hire queer BIPOC disabled reviewers and journalists, because when the press in the gaming industry is all one thing, right? We don't have that echelon of voice criticizing and speaking. And it has gotten better. And there are lots of small outlets that do really great reviews on, on AAA games that are coming out and about these issues. But we have to have, we have to have representation in the major outlets, you know, in Polygon, in Kotaku, in in Game Informer, in all of these all of these outlets, that's one thing that we have to do. Is we have to when and when they hire those folks and when those folks put out reviews, we got to share the shit out of them and engage like like we never have before, right? Because the more that we the more that those outlets see that going well, the more they're going to do it. And if we can get folks at that level talking about it, that makes. <laughs> Talk about Ronald Reagan earlier. This is not trickle down. <laughs> this is not, like, but it's true, right? Because at that level, for it. I know. I was like, ah, damn, what have I done? Uh, but it's true, right? At that, if we, if they, if it's, if it's part of the conversation at that level, then, then us chiming in on on the bird app or whatever uh, suddenly becomes part of that zeitgeist rather than a bunch of marginalized folks yelling on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. it's very easy to ignore people yelling on Twitter because especially when it comes to like I, at least I noticed in terms of like gaming critique is a lot of it can get written off as like oh it's just fans being angry rather than yeah. people expressing genuine critique who are looking at the game who are hurt by like I said before, be, no one wants to be an afterthought no one wants to think oh god they just put me in because they knew they'd catch hell if they didn't in the marketing so they're just putting this in here to sort of avoid criticism like that sucks no one wants that so yeah. it, it's I, I I think it's important to have those like as much as it's important for people to talk about their personal feelings, there does need to be some people like in these positions of power that we can point to and go. They're also saying this. Read this. Look mm -hmm. at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, for me, I did game journalism. For those that don't know, and mildly criticizing a Nintendo Switch game of all things got me enough hate to where I stopped writing about games. Stop doing it. And no, these people like stalked me. They constantly messaged me, found my personal Facebook, other stuff. So um, it's hard because even the most well thought out criticism, especially if you're coming from, if it's coming from a black person, a queer person, a femme person, uh -huh. someone who's neurodivergent, people will see your photo and just write you off as aggressive, write you off as angry. Because the game I criticized was ARMS and it was about the fact that the one brown character we got at that time, everyone else's arms was a springy weapon type thing, but her hair was. And this wasn't like my best writing. This wasn't political level writing. It was a mild critique of why is the one brown chick got to have springy hair as a weapon? And some people harassed me to the point where I had to point out, do you not see the irony of harassing a real life black person over some fucking pixels? And there's just the discounting of valid critique as complaining or just don't play the game. And, and Brian and I were on a panel once, or maybe it was Misty, but I know it was a MAGFest panel where this came up. And we talked about content warnings and listening to marginalized voice. People like, well, the artist and the dev's vision. And it's like, but is the dev's vision to exclude as many people from playing this game? And I think we can have critique, but you can't have it in places like Twitter. You cannot have conversations yeah. online. Yeah, it doesn't work. Places. No. Because no matter, no matter what I do to protect myself, unless I lock down my tweets, 
and keep people from retweeting it, someone will find it, they'll quote tweet it, they'll do whatever. So at, at a certain point, you just gotta not do it. But that's me. No, it's it's, it's tough. I, I feel, yeah, we got a five minute warning. I feel like there's no good <laughs> there's no good answer for that. I you know I'm I'm blessed to be surrounded by people who actually can speak and give proper critique and separate that from personal and emotional. But yeah, it's not easy. It, it it's really not easy. And I would say like, don't throw yourself to the wolves if you don't feel like you are able. You know, if you don't feel like you have the energy for that, absolutely do not throw yourself to the wolves for that. It's not worth it. Not only not on Twitter. <laughs> no, God, no. Save your energy. Um, I think we're getting far enough along in the panel. If anyone has any Q and A stuff, um, we'd be happy to answer. Yeah, because I know there's a little Q and A section here. Where? Give us the oh, question. Wait, hold on. Where? Oh. Oh. Oops. Ah, I'm sorry. I was like, where? oh, there is one. In fact, I don't uh, see one. Should, um, should I? You want me to read it? Oh, yes, one in the Q and A. Yes. Yeah. So it says some thoughts on lighting in games and promo materials regard. Oh, do we have? I got it. Uh, thoughts okay. on lighting in games and promo materials regarding skin color because there have been incidents where a darker character skin, not ethnicity, was lighter in stronger lighting and all hell broke loose. Hold on, I'm getting an article I wrote about that. Oh, good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I don't know there's... about lighting from a time. <laughs> I don't I mean, either. And oh. I abhor it, but. Right, and I think that's sort of the point, right? Is like, I don't know, but you should probably hire someone to, that does know when you're making yeah. your game. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a bit of a flippant answer, but like. No, legitimately. Like, <laughs> I mean, we, oh, sorry, Brian, you're up. No, yeah, it's okay. Cause we've, we've talked about, you know, like every now and then the same conversation comes up on social media about the history of photography and the history of like skin color and how it's transmitted and how everything has been guided by that one model and that one test strip. and. And, and yeah, it, it's like, it's like, oh, great, your character looks great in this light. And all of a sudden, they're in the slightest bit of shadow. And that's it. All you can see are like the eyeball assets. So yeah, it's it's still a still a ways to go to say, well, maybe you didn't QA this enough. Maybe this needed more testing. Um, because I don't, I typically don't get stuck on things like that in a game. But it is it is very strange when all of a sudden you're taking a screenshot of this amazing scene and your character has been, you know, like all of a sudden is like as light as wallpaper or, <laughs> you know, as dark as night when I'm like, I'm pretty sure I made a lovely like medium brown skin tone character. What just happened? <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's not even about QA is that film, everything people learn about film and lighting is based on a one model of a bald headed white dude. And let's not forget, like when automatic soap dispensers and air dryers came out, they didn't register if you were if you were darker than a brown bag. People would stick yeah. their hands under and not get soap, not get air. So this is literally not thinking about everyone in the room or who will use your product. I wish I could remember there was, and I'm look, I'm searching all over for it, but like my search terms are wild because I don't remember enough about this article. But there's a really interesting article about a TV show. And their lighting designer did really amazing things specifically for the black leads. And the way that they had to completely rethink their lighting setup, because exactly what Tanya just said, because traditional lighting, do you remember what it is, Brian? It was the Moonlight. Issa Rae show. Yes, no, it was Issa Rae. I mean, and it was I Issa Rae's was. TV show. Moonlight also did the same thing. Uh, Moonlight okay. also had a great way of lighting, but yeah. Um, look that up because yeah, they, they absolutely, ch Insecure, yes. thank you. They insecure. absolutely changed. <laughs> Changed the entire game on on how darker skin is lit and just made everybody look amazing and brilliant. Incredible, and it's it's possible, but it is work. And <laughs> and like we've said, you know, we we are allowed to expect that if you can hire folks that are going to light the game so that white folks look good, that you can hire folks that can light the game so brown folks, brown and black folks look good. Like it's you know, it is it is it, it all comes back to yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's work. Mm -hmm. Doing that <laughs> sucks. Don't don't make part it of then. it. Like that's part of it. Yeah. Um, and and again, like flippant. But I, I don't. I don't. I shouldn't have to be able to tell you how to change the lighting to make it look better. That's not my job. I play the game. Right. No, agreed. And I mean, we got we literally got like sixty seconds left. So I'm going to say this. This is actually final point. I'm going to end on. This does also mean this is up to the games industry as a whole, not individual players, to make this work. We're not. I can't make a rigging lighting system, no matter how hard I work on trying to create a character with dark skin. 
you guys have to put in the work on the lighting and the rigging. You guys have to make more genders. You, like that's on the industry. That's not, you have, you to, have to, the industry. I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> but like <laughs> as it stands now, there's a lot that needs to be changed. And I, and that does not just come down to player responsibility. Yeah. So I think, thank you everybody so much for doing this and being here. This panel went fantastic. I'm really happy I pitched it. I'm really happy everybody came. Yay. Yeah, Yay. thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Oh, hello. Woohoo. Hello.